guy is blue tongue skin. Oops, it's blowing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little nervous. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. Good morning, Mabu High Squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Um, guys, we're on a road trip. We're heading to Manila. Um, it's a brand new day. I'm so excited because we are heading to a magical place that I have not been able to visit. Well, since the pandemic. So this is a place called Cardamar. Um, it's basically a pet market. Um, and I need to pick up some stuff for the Ants Canada channel. So I am so excited to go there, check around, look at animals with you guys, and um, of course, take you along on our Cardamar adventure. So in case you're new, um, RJ and I currently are renting a home with our cousins Edmark and Nika, who are currently in Dubai. Yes, um, they're there for uh, Nika's birthday her getaway birthday so I hope they're having fun but this here is an area in the Philippines called Tagaytay it's uh, near it's actually near a volcano which has been erupting um, a little bit over the past few days so I mean it stop it starts in the morning then it stops but this here is a beautiful neighborhood I love this neighborhood definitely gonna miss it when we move as you may or may not know, RJ, my partner and I, will be moving to our permanent home, uh, a farmhouse, which will be um, as sustainable as possible out in the province, um, in, in this province of Cavite, here in the Philippines. And guys, it's a project we've been working on for the past four years. And interestingly enough, one room in this house, actually, I would say two, but one room in this house is dedicated to animals. Yes, to our pets, to all the exotic pets. So I'm really excited about that room. It's called the ant room slash pet room. Um, all my ants, aquariums, fish tanks, I plan on keeping that in that room. And then plus we have in the center of the house, a three-story aviary, yes, for birds. So um, this Cardamar trip today uh, will definitely get the wheels turning in my head as to how I'm going to populate our home with animals and live in the animal kingdom of our farmhouse. And guys, my eye is still like red and swollen from yesterday. I think I'm having an allergic reaction, perhaps to the ash from the volcano from Mantaal. Gotta wear these shades. All right, guys, back in Manila. Back in the big city. Manila. I keep coming back to Manila. See all the buildings, traffic. We're here on EDSA, obviously the, I guess the biggest highway in the Philippines. Guys, I miss living in Manila. I love that it's obviously so busy, right? The rhythm of the city is high paced. Um, you know, cars are going everywhere, tons of people. Uh, last time we were here, when we were visiting the condo, RJ and I had to cross the street. Remember RJ? Remember that? Yeah. And? We were scared. <laughs> <laughs> we were scared because... We're no longer used to it. Yeah, we weren't used, like we had to, our, our senses were like a hundred times heightened. Just so we wouldn't get hit by a car or like run into a biker passing by or something, you know what I mean? Because we've lived outside of Manila since August last year. Mm -hmm since august of last year guys so it's been like nine months since we've lived here in manila so we've gotten used to the rhythm of like tagaytay slow spacious you know what i mean not that many people um and so coming back here it's all of a sudden we're like in survival mode like as if we're tourists again um but yeah very different here in the city always great coming back to the city all right guys we are here at cardamar pet center Ooh, so good to be back so these are worthy contenders for our aviary we've got cockatiels awesome budgies over right here and lovebirds look how cute but if you had to choose between these three for our aviary which species they're all cute they're all cute hi there hi and they're not afraid of people. Oh, look at all this driftwood, rocks, branches. Love it. Oh, so cute. Oh, this cat is so cute. It doesn't even look like a cat. Look at the cute guinea pigs. 
and rabbits. There's a lot of animals you could buy here. Most people are against them because of how the animals are treated or in, and they support like puppy mills and stuff. But there are a lot of vendors here that don't sell animals. They sell like equipment and fish. Um, and some of the products are really good and they're affordable. That's why RJ and I come here. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I miss having bunnies. Like see a bunch of birds packed into small cages. You'll see a lot of that here. It's a little sad, but... Hi guys. Hi. Cockatiels, by the, may, by the way, make amazing pets. Look at this one. This one's coming up to me. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Now the thing with these birds is cockatiels and also budgies come from grassland areas. So it's like more drier, like grass field areas. And our aviary is more tropical. I mean, they could be housed in tropical countries, as you guys can see. Uh, but it's if we really want to stay true to the tropical, like rainforest jungle theme of the aviary, um, we would go with more birds like conures and parrots, certain, certain other parrots. Hi guys, you're so cute though. Cute hedgehogs, nice hedgehogs. Man, remember how we were supposed to have hedgehogs from Ch a hedgehog from Chito Miranda? More cockatiels. These cockatiels are just... I think their wings are clipped. Oh, hi there. I'm sorry. They clipped you. How sad. They're terrified. Oh my... Look at those baby birds. African lovebirds, guys. Oh my gosh. So cute. Guys, there are just so many guys. Hi. Are you all hand-raised? It seems like they're still afraid of... They're, they're, they're afraid of people. I think what will happen is before we release our birds in the aviary, we have to keep them in like proper cages indoors first uh, so that they bond with our J and I and at the LC and all those in our house and then we release them in the aviary. So I think release into the aviary will be more of a gradual process um, because we don't want to just release them in the aviary and have them like be afraid of humans and never come to us. Well, that's okay too, but you know, it's just a lot easier when the birds are already bonded with us and have learned to, you know, have learned that humans are friends and so they can just come to us on command. If ever we need to bring them to the vet, we just bribe them with some treats to come and we can put them into a cage easily, etc. Hey guys, oh these lovebirds are beautiful. I've had budgies before. I've had cockatiels before. Never lovebirds. RJ, what do you think about these finches in the aviary? This is another bird I was considering. Only thing is these finches breed like rats. We'll start with like five and we'll end up with a hundred by the end of the year. Well, maybe not that fast, but um, you can get them bonded to humans, but from my understanding, it's like hit or miss with these birds. Like you should really raise them while they're young and get them to imprint on you, but they're very flighty, but they're beautiful. Imagine a big flock of finches in the aviary. That would be gorgeous. You could also do doves. How about these? Doves. I'm not sure. No, I've considered doves. I think doves are beautiful. They're called diamond doves, these ones. I guess it's because on their wings, you can see little speckles that look like diamonds. Is that why? They're cute. I wonder how big they get. Now I have seen aviaries where they mix birds, like doves and pigeons with like finches and, and also like parakeets. Um, I have seen that before. So, I mean, I, we're in no rush to stock our aviary, but we do have a large aviary and um, for the past three years, I've been trying to like figure out what I want to do, what birds we want to add. Look guys, see full-sized cages with top playpen, like playground. They sell a lot of them here actually. Gorgeous, right? Now we'll have to buy one of these once we do have birds again, again, so that we can keep the birds with us indoors, preferably in our bedroom where the birds can see us uh, frequently until they bond with us and we'll also practice free flight training etc so that the birds can uh, can be trained to come on command etc all right guys one of my favorite places in all of cardamar this is reptilab they have a shop here and they have another shop down the road 
Let's go in. Oh, I don't see anything. Oh, the, they've emptied. I think it's because of the pandemic. Oh, it's just food. Oh my, look at these fish, guys. See how they're neon? Um, I believe these are artificially colored. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think they inject the neon color into the fish. It's a little sad, but I don't know. I guess they look pretty, but it is sad for me. What do you guys think? Guys, look at this arowana. Wow. Sibe, if we do want the birds to breed in our aviary, we just hang one of these in, you know, on those things on the wall. I, I have things where we could hang like these little rings in our aviary um, where I could hang baskets like this if I do want to breed. So here's the bathroom. For those of you who aren't in the Philippines, some of the public bathrooms you have to pay. It's something like, here, it's only five pesos, so it's like not a lot, really cheap, but you have to pay to use the bathroom. And there's no toilet paper, so <laughs> you have to be used to that. They also sell refreshments and snacks, see that? This here is uh, dirty ice cream, they call it. It's just street, street sold ice cream. Here's probably our favorite section of the pet market. It's like in this area here. They sell tons of fish, tons of like aquarium stuff. They even sell saltwater stuff. See, lots of fish. Fish, fish, fish. We got a flower horn here. Hi there. These fish have a lot of personality. I think one day we'll get a flower horn. Look at all these saltwater fish. Saltwater, saltwater. See? Clown fish. What? I miss our angel fish. RJ misses our angel fish. I know, I miss our angel. I miss our fish tank too. Here are koi. Maybe one day we'll have koi because we have a fish pond in our yard, which I plan on decorating like naturally and it'll be big enough for koi so we'll see we got plecos these eat algae <laughs> guys meet our friend ryan hi ryan hi yes <laughs> guys this is his awesome corner he is totally into beautiful paludarium scapes look at that guys look at that isn't that gorgeous got a little waterfall going and tank it's baby flower horn he sells all sorts of aquatic freshwater plants um, I think I'm going to get, I'm gonna get moss. I'll get some of this moss. Look at how beautiful it is. It's like a sand waterfall. Wow. Oh, natural algae growing? The moss? Oh, wow. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, guys. Now this is my favorite. I always say this is my favorite, but honestly, the plants. Guys, I just love coming to these nurseries. It's just so beautiful. Okay, so my idea for the aviary is <clears throat> because we're not going to have a dirt floor anymore, um, it's gonna be tiled. Uh, this will just make things a lot easier to clean. Um, it'll also look neater and will help reduce, you know, overgrowth of mold because my fear is that the aviary will kind of like get moldy smelling and I don't want that. So, um, the floor will be tiles and we could always just wash the floor with a hose, etc. Um, and most of the plants will be potted and also epiphytic plants like this. Like see this can grow out on a piece of driftwood. A lot of the bromeliads can grow epiphytically. There's a certain species of bromeliad that I really love that I've always dreamed of having. Let's see if I can find it. Oh here. These are air plants, Spanish moss. This is also a type of bromeliad. And it c can just hang from like driftwood and it just continues to grow. You just gotta keep watering it. I love it. RJ wants to show a plant. Which, oh, that looks different. What is this? It's creepy looking. It looks like tentacles of a squid. See, lots of plants. Bromeliads, gorgeous plants like this. Dracaena or Dracania or something like that. Oh, here's another species of bromeliad. These are air plants, they're called telangias. These are gorgeous, I could collect these. Oh, here, these plants, we're gonna actually grow the, a lot of these all over the property. Um, they can grow epiphytically, meaning they can grow on like trees and driftwood. Um, they just need a little bit of peat moss and a little bit of growing medium, but they can attach to things like even rocks. So these would be easy to plant around the aviary, I think. At strategic spots we would just like basically attach some kind of like pot like or hanging basket to the driftwood and just obscure this with like spend it with moss and stuff um, and look it looks so pretty right and it can grow pretty big of course we can grow plants like this in the aviary which can go 
get pretty tall and I think it looks really tropical. See that? Orchids are also can be grown epiphytically as well. I've always wanted to have like an orchid garden. Um, we have money plant. Guys, you you know the huge money plant in our backyard at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse? These look very pretty and they grow pretty tall. So uh, maybe we can have a huge money plant tree growing inside the aviary. What do you guys say? They also sell a bunch of herbs and flowers. RJ loves this flower, Bourgogneville, it's called I think. We're gonna buy some lilies for our pond. So much to see here, I, lo I love this. Guys, look at these pigeons. Hi guys, I love pigeons. They do poo a lot. I, I did consider keeping fancy pigeons in the aviary. Um, what's great about pigeons is they um, don't destroy wood like parrots do. Like parrots need to keep trimming their beaks and they got to destroy wood and chew toys and stuff. Pigeons don't need that. Um, and you know, pigeons are also kind of homebound, which is why they're great for homing, right? They, they stick to home. You release them far away from home, they'll find their way back home. Um, so that's kind of cool, but they do poo a lot. Okay guys, here's the other branch of like reptiles. Guys, they have a California king snake here. What's the color face? High white. Wow. Oh, they have a black version too. California kings are not normally this color. They're like black and white, like banded. Ooh, I haven't seen one of these for a long time. Wow, the store has so many new animals and tanks. What's in here? If I were to guess, it's some kind of frog. Ah, uh, okay, it's a bioactive setup. Only plants. Iguana. I definitely want one of these. Holy, he's got a, they've got a lot here. And this is kind of a nice size. I would love to buy them at this size, not too, too small. Although you could buy them small. Oh my gosh, guys, it's a caiman. What kind of caiman is this? Oh, spectacle. Six, seven feet, the right? Yes, dwarf caiman. Dwarf caiman. Oh my god, that's crazy. They get six or seven feet long. I love iguanas and the thing about iguanas is most people don't realize that they get really big. Males can reach six feet long and once they get to like a huge size, most people don't have the like space to house them. I mean, if you ever go to Mexico and you see them in the wild, they are pretty free roaming. So they need a lot of space and they're also like climbers. They're arboreal, so they live in the trees. So if you don't have like the height, they'll just kind of wander the tank. But we have an aviary, so I'm thinking of like eventually releasing our, a, an adult iguana in the aviary. I think it can get along with birds. These are savannah monitors. Beautiful. Hi guys. Varanidae guys. Awesome. It's the same uh, family as, you know, the uh, Komodo dragons. But these ones are native to Africa and they get pretty big and fat. Baby bearded dragons. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. I can touch it. Hi there. Oh, you are so cute. I used to have one, one and it died. They make great uh, lizard pets for f first lizards. They're handleable. They can get to like get used to human handling. Yeah, hi guys. They are omnivorous, so they eat plants and like insects. Pinky mice, by the Do you remember our bearded dragon? Yeah. Ours lived long. And uh, native to like the grasslands of Australia. There's a blue, blue tongue skin. Yes. Or, um, yeah. Blue tongue skin, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, blue tongue skink, guys. These also make cool lizard pets. I've never had one. Hi there, buddy. <laughs> this is a sub-adult bearded dragon. Hi there. Beautiful skink. Oh my gosh, RJ, can you hold this? Guys, blue tongue skink. Oops, it's pooing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little nervous. Pooing or peeing? I think, it, well, they kind of do both. It's like a... It comes, out of, it comes out of the same opening. Poo and pee together. Hi, hi guys. You're so cute. Okay guys, so apparently this is no longer part of Reptilab. It's called 100% Exotic. So this is a different store, different owner. Um, but, I mean, it looks the same as before. Same employees too, same friendly employees. This bearded dragon is so cute. Hey there. Oh, so cute. Salkara. These are baby salkaras, guys. And they grow so fast. These are tortoises. Look at it. Um, Kathy, our interior designer, has one. <laughs> so cute. Look at it eating. Guys, RJ's in love with this California king. How much is that California? 35,000. 35,000, wow. I mean, it is a gorgeous snake. And is it aggressive? 
a little bit. Oh, you can get these to be hand tamed. You just have to like hold them when they're young. But this one's aggressive. You can't hold it. It would be like Valentino. <laughs> Just look, but don't touch. Now this was my very first snake. This is a ball python. Now growing up, my mom let me keep all kinds of animals, all kinds of reptiles, tarantulas, scorpions, uh, giant cockroaches, but her only pet that she would not let me keep were snakes. So I only got to keep snakes when I moved out of the house to Montreal. That's when I got my first ball python. They make really good first uh, snakes for those who want to get into snakes and they grow a nice size and they're generally handleable and they come in different beautiful color phases look at that wow see this one is coral glow this is called banana mystic see they've got like designer colors pooter fire <gasps> pastel leopard sugar wow these guys are native to the philippines oh is it handleable oh okay he's not that afraid of people hi there Hi, so nice. Sailfin. It's called a sailfin dragon. Now guys, these used to be on sale. Oh, there's another one. They used to be on sale in in the pet store in Canada and they were expensive. They like went over a hundred bucks. Um, but these are native here. I knew it, I knew it. In here is a sand boa. Do you see it? Cute. So it like buries itself in the sand and like when you throw a mouse in, it will, it will eat it. Is that its head right there? Do you, do you see it guys? It's sticking its head out of the sand. So if you were to throw like a baby pinky mouse in there, at that part, it would eat it. Wow. Guys, he's pulling out the collection. This was my very first job, by the way, guys, selling reptiles at a pet store in the 90s. I worked at PJ's Pet Center, it was called. Oh my gosh, wow. Oh, it's so big. You can also keep it in uh, wood chips. Oh, wow. Pine shavings, I should say. Wow. Whoa. Look at it. It's so therapeutic watching it yeah. bury itself, right? <laughs> How interesting. Okay, guys, look at this iguana at the corner. It's an albino. Hi. Hi, pup. Oh, it's got less, like, black. Less dark pigmentation, yeah. Okay. And then that one is what? Oh my, it's orange and green. Oh, it doesn't look real. Oh my goodness, look at that. What a color. Guys, I've never seen that color before. Oh, wow. Iba. It's like neon. Amazing. Wow, guys. They have so many different color phases now. Like, back when I first started doing reptiles in the, like, 90s, like, seeing something like this was super duper rare. Guys, this is 90,000 pesos. That's like... What, is that 2,000? About over 2,000 US dollars? Wow! Wow! Guys, these here are albino iguanas. See that? Wow! I mean, I, I really do like the normal color phase, just the green. But all of these different colors are also neat. Like, it's easy to start collecting <laughs> once you get into reptiles. And um, having cool color phases like this <laughs> are definitely vied and highly sought after by collectors. Hi there, oh, he's coming, he's coming. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my goodness, guys. This is one of the coolest lizards ever. It's called a tegu, an Argentinian tegu. They come in like a couple color phases, like the normal, which is black, but this one's red. Look at that. I, I watch like TikTok videos of people like feeding their tegus like food and human food with chopsticks and stuff and they get huge. They, but this is not full grown. Yeah, it's a sub adult guys. They get bigger than this and they get fat. You have to watch out because they could get really like obese. Look at it. This thing is a dinosaur. Oh my gosh, look at it. Like, can you imagine this in our house? Our dogs would probably attack it, right? That's a thing. Like we have dogs and they're like highly predatory dogs i think i mean they're yorkies yeah we'll try to keep them up but i do want to desensitize our dogs to like our smaller pets we have to really start working on that and to our birds like i don't want the dogs to chase our birds if they land on the floor hi there you are so beautiful you oh its skin is so awesome it's so leathery okay sorry he's looking at me he's like what are you doing don't touch this thing's a real life dinosaur guys now reptiles are generally a, I would call them mid-range 
maintenance pets. Um, I wouldn't call them low maintenance. I mean, unless it's snakes. Like snakes are just very low maintenance. Like lizards. Oh, oh it's okay. going underneath. Oh, they're like mid maintenance pets. Some of them borderline high maintenance. They need regular vet visits and not all vets are trained for reptiles. So that's another thing you should consider before getting them. And space requirements. Like that's also a big thing. These animals poo a lot. They require, some of them require like live food so you have to like consider getting live crickets or breeding crickets and roaches and that kind of thing and they can get into trouble as you can see <laughs> his name is senpai bye senpai <laughs> okay buying stuff for our dogs <laughs> our children they've got all sorts of stuff here guys brushes toothbrushes water bottles for dogs leashes kitty litter boxes guys we're looking for a leash that isn't for one of our current dogs. And that is a big secret that we'll be revealing soon. <laughs> Mobile High Squad, we have some news to share with you guys soon. And of course, after a whole day of shopping for pet stuff, some snacks. What is this? Japanese bun? Pancake. Oh, pancake. Japanese pancake, guys. RJ wants some. All right, guys, and we are done. Our shopping spree here in Cartamar Pet Center. Oh, I'm tired, guys. But thanks for joining us in all the fun. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this vlog. And again, hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mobile High Squad. We will be your daily dose of positive vibes online. Yes. <laughs>